I got my rear end re-geared. So this is a pretty good size axle, let's yeah. just say. And, and then, then a, that's the trophy truck yeah. axle. So. Go get you a junkyard nine inch and just have at it, go crazy. Hey, what's up everybody? Um, it's your dude Black Hat here. Uh, we are back at Alec Navarro's shop where I got my rear end re-geared and a locker put in to my truck um, and where we have done part one of this a little mini series about um, gears and axles and all kinds of good stuff. So today we're going to talk about the, the third members, right? So we, so we kind of encroached mostly on the nine inch rear end, which is the most common axle to upgrade. Um, so now we're going to talk about putting that stuff all together inside the third member or, the, or case, you know, and what that looks like. And then we're going to start talking about some axles and things that connect everything together. Correct? Is that yep. is that is that what's left? About housings um, and oh, housings. And all that. Yeah, there's there's a nice pretty housing over there. We'll talk about. Um, so in this episode, that's what we're going to go over. We're going to go over. You know, you bought your gears, you bought your carrier, and now you need to complete the axle. So. Take it away, my friend. Sure, all right. Looking at different third members, once you're gonna decide to use a nine inch platform to build like a desert truck differential or even uh, drag racing or anything, you need to consider the parts you're gonna use to complete the build. This here is a differential built for like a street cruiser, an older Ford. This is a factory housing. So this case um, is something you can find at the junkyard. So if you go yank one from the junkyard you can actually still use this case to some extent when you get into the high horsepower big tires you can start blowing these cases apart but um, they do hold a decent amount of power and uh, are usable so this one something to look out for is there's different size bearing uh, housing so this is a 3.06 inch diameter axle housing they make a 2.89. Those are the two most common you're going to find in a junkyard. And uh, if you're going to try and stuff bigger axles in it, preferably you want the bigger housing there. And then also there's, there's different types of different ribbing. Some of the factory ones are actually a nodular iron. You'll see an N on there. Those are going to be the strongest ones. Um, but all things to look out for if you're planning on reusing uh, the factory case gotcha. from like a junkyard. So what does the what does the ribbing do? Um, just braces it. This pinion and, and ring and pinion wants to come apart and uh, wants to blow all different kinds of ways and so the more material you have holding it all together the less deflection, the longer your gears will last and the less likely you are to yard sail it right, in the right. desert. <laughs> okay, makes sense. A couple things that you typically don't reuse is the factory pinion support. This is what holds the pinion into the housing and the factory one has pretty small bearings and a, a pretty narrow spread. So the common one for like a mild-ish build would be the Daytona support. That adds a little bit more spread between the two tapered bearings and it increases the inside bearing significantly uh, on these Daytona supports. That's a common upgrade, it's not very expensive and if you're going to go through it, it's one thing to change. Um, highly recommended. And then also the yoke. It's not very expensive to go to like a 1350 forged yoke. Um, which is the U-joint size there and uh, keeps this thing as strong as you can make the factory style third member. <laughs> the next step, if it's a more serious, so like this is going in, a more serious pre-runner. So it eliminates the differential action and we have the full spool like we talked about earlier. And that's uh, no moving parts, just fully engaged at all times, both axles connected. And this one utilizes the same Daytona support, the same size yoke but it's a much stronger case itself. And you'll notice the aftermarket cases, this is a common one to go to, it has a 3.25 bearing OD on the carrier, which allows you to run up to 40 spline axles. Oh, okay. So um, this what's is- the, What's the biggest spline axle this can do? Um, they make a couple conversions, but typically you're limited to like 31 spline. Gotcha. Yeah, so this one will hold 35 and um, 40 spline really easily. That's the typical journal size. It works well with these and uh, because they have bigger bolts, more material, it's pretty hard to kill these. So these are good. We in fact stuff uh, 10 inch gears into these and a couple like ultra four cars and things like that and, and they hold up really well. So an aftermarket case, a three and a quarter race case is what it's referred to, um, is a great upgrade. That's like what's in my 1400 truck and a lot of builds like that. That's what this is going into is like a 1400 truck. And, and, I, see, and I see you got some some extra tethering going on here. So what, so what exactly is that all about? Oh yeah, on this particular one we use ARP hardware 
and safety wired it in. So when you're going through and inspecting, one thing you don't have to worry about is the ring gear bolts backing off. So yeah, yeah. yeah. common on desert stuff will do that, mm -hmm. especially on these smaller 7 16 bolt diffs. Right on. Then, okay, so we kind of go from from a mild, you know, street daily uh, off-road rig to something a little more serious. You know, you're probably trailer queen uh, most of the time, pre-runner that you don't really drive on the street because it's got the full spool and it's got all the all the goodies, all the ARB bolts and you know, he's even tether wired, all that stuff. And then we get into, what is this? Is this a trophy truck deal yet? Yeah, okay. it's actually specifically out of a 6100, but yeah, this is 10 inch gear, big, and you can see the difference here. This is a four inch case with the jumbo 36 point axles for the trophy truck stuff. So four inch, pretty much this one's how, this one gets how big? This is three and a quarter. This one um, is kind of strong as it gets really, as far as a lot of these parts. So. It actually uses an even bigger pinion support with much bigger um, OD bearings in it and a taller spread, which helps keep this pinion from deflecting. And it uses a 35 spline. If you look at the different sizes in the pinion nuts, you'll see that the trophy truck stuff is much bigger shafts on that. So another thing that makes these cases really strong on these uh, the trophy trucks, and we'll do that on some of the 1400 trucks and smaller diffs, is this load bolt. So the load bolt is held in the housing and what it does is but it sits just a few thousandths behind the gear. Uh -huh. When you're hitting the whoops at 100 miles an hour and with giant tires, it wants to push this gear over right where the pinion is. Yeah. The pinion wants to shove the gear that way. That pin sits right on the other side of the ring gear and will only allow it to deflect that little tiny bit and which will keep it from pushing over so far that you shear the teeth off or run the gear in a funky spot and, and cause it to burn up eventually. So that's another way that these uh, higher end diffs keep the gears alive yeah. is, you know, with the big pinion support, big bearings and uh, the load bolt in the case to keep that deflection down. Um, you got nice, really nice hardware, 12 point bolts. And these are half inch instead of the 716s also. Okay, which, so uh, half inch. More strength there as well. Yeah. So, do you, are, so you're so confident in these bolts a lot of times we will run both. Tether wire? Uh, not in this scenario, but a lot of times we will actually run the 716s and the half inch. So there's actually 20 bolts on the ring gear. That's another advantage. If the gear's double drilled and the spool's double drilled, you can run double the hardware and really make sure that thing doesn't come loose. Yeah. So. What we didn't touch base on, Mr. Mr. Gear Man, was, was the paint. What's with the paint? When you're setting these up, um, you're trying to get the gear in its happy place so that it stays quiet and lasts as long as possible. So as you adjust them, that's what these are here for, uh, these carrier adjusters, is it moves the gear side to side. And then you have these shims, if you can see them, in between the pinion support and the case. Just that little line of silver right there. Yeah, so between those two adjustments, you hone the gear in exactly where it wants to be. It'll last the longest and be the quietest. And that, that paint, what it removes, will show you uh, where it's riding and you aim for the perfect pattern there gotcha. to get it to last long. So now, what essentially does this go into? Is what do the axles look like? Yeah, obviously this bolts in here. Right. So this, yeah. So that's what that's what these holes yep. are for, right? Yep. So these yep. bolt right into there. Okay. Yep. And then the main difference, otherwise, uh, between strength and design, is going to be what you put on the actual ends. When it comes to the ends, there's in the axle world, there's C-clip axles, semi-float axles, and like full float axles. So if we come over here, your typical like Chevy half ton, Ford 8.8, .8, a lot of people will use like an Explorer axle. There was called a C-clip axle. You'll see this axle slides into your housing. The bearing just sits there. This has no retention at this bearing. And it's actually held in by this little clip that uh, sits against the side gear and keeps the axle from coming out. Okay. So this design is how a lot of factory cars are made. Um, but not good for high performance, a lot of side load, desert stuff. It kills this type of axle. The next option is a semi float, which is what all factory nine inches are. So if you go to the junkyard and grab an axle, they're going to be semi float. What that means is there's no axle retention on the end of it. Those just slip right into the carrier. But there's an actual bearing here that presses onto the shaft, under that shoulder. And between this bearing and this collar, the resistance is so snug that that's what keeps your axle from wanting out. Is oh, okay. There's a retainer plate that holds the bearing in, and the bearing grabs the axle so tight that it won't come out of the vehicle. Uh, so semi-flow and C-clip, the wheel and tire bolts directly to the flange of the axle. One thing to note when you go and grab one from like the junkyard, 
is this bearing sits in this pocket. So semi-float means you'll have an end like this that welds right to the end of the housing and holds that bearing and axle. Okay. So uh, what people talk about, you know, when you go to the junkyard is getting a big bearing housing. Typically what they refer to is this bearing diameter. I believe it's a 3.150 diameter bearing and it'll accept the set 20, which is like the most common for your aftermarket housings is the set 20 bearings. The other bearings are gonna be smaller roller bearing and they're not good for side load and you know abuse. So if you're gonna go grab a housing from the junkyard, you wanna make sure you get what's called a big bearing housing and you'll note it by this diameter. Um, and also they make a new style and an old style. So the new style will have that diameter with the 3 8 hardware and uh, the other big bearing housing will have actually half inch bolts um, which is one way to tell that it's a big bearing is the half inch bolts. This end and this bearing combo is gonna have the most brake kit options and other aftermarket accessories because uh, it's the most common go-to for the aftermarket stuff. So, so, um, get, so get, make sure you get the big bearing nine inch if you're gonna Yeah, it which will be out of a, a van or the Torinos and the, the big cars and stuff, yeah. Gotcha. This is a full float. So full float has splines on both ends. There is no flange for the wheel to bolt to. So on a full float, one end goes into the spool or carrier and the other end goes into a hub. So much like a diesel truck uh, or big heavy equipment, it uses a hub. So your wheel actually bolts to this hub with two large opposing tapered bearings and it slips onto this spindle much like some Front, front setups, so you would actually weld this spindle into the housing rather than that housing end. The axle spline sits in this drive plate rather than having a flange like that. So main strength factor there is your wheel is held on by a large diameter spindle, two big bearings, yeah. and uh, the whole hub assembly rather than just this one axle flange and the bearing. Another advantage of this is, which I actually had happen at Battle of Prim, if you have a full flow hub like this and a full spool, you snap an axle, you can still drive on the opposing tire and keep the vehicle moving at least for a while. When these snap, your wheel goes off into no man's land along with the flange. So there's just a lot of strength there. You're only asking the full float axle to rotate the tire, take that load, not actually hold the tire on. So when you land a jump, you're asking this axle to not break off at the flange. Whereas when you land a jump, the full float axle doesn't see any load. The hub takes all the load. Gotcha. gotcha. So that's the main advantage to that is, you know, they're, they're two separate functions rather than semi-float rotates the tire and also holds it on. You were telling me earlier, so, that, so that, that full float axle you have down there is not a trophy truck axle, right? No, this is a 35 spline axle. So factory axles from uh, like the junkyard will come with either 28 spline or 31 spline. This is a, a 35 spline, which is a good upgrade and will take a lot of abuse. But uh, this chromoly axle, the opposing one, it actually snapped in two uh, back in the day in the, my Ford Ranger with 35s when it was on the small tire. So you can kill them. And so typical 40 spline will be next option. And then you go into jumbo 40 and then jumbo 36, which is like a trophy truck, which you can so, see. So this is a pretty good size axle, let's yeah. just say. And, and then, then a, that's the trophy truck axle. Yeah. So you can tell that the trophy truck axles are uh, significantly larger and they're actually uh, hollow. They're gun drilled for it to allow some twists. So oh, okay, right on. Um, yeah, this is what your, your big uh, trophy truck axle will look like as far as the spline on both ends, but the diameter is much yeah. Much bigger, yeah. So what about the housing? This doesn't look like a junkyard housing. No, now. so when it comes to junkyard housing, like we spoke, you want to look for the big OD bearing. And if you can take it apart, look for the bigger OD case. But when it comes to serious desert trucks, another thing you want to consider is going to a fab housing with bigger tubes. You know, trophy truck stuff will go all the way up to like a four inch tube. Um, this particular one is going to be uh, more of a street vehicle here. Also, they make what's called like a banjo and a centurion style housing. And if you go to the junkyard and look for housing, the banjo style, real small and a rounded center section with uh -huh. tiny tubes on it. Uh -huh. And then you'll see the centurion style, which tapers off real wide, similar to how this looks. 
and uh, that's the housing, like a Torino style housing you're going to want to run. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far that as was in like the heavy duty, mm -hmm. big cars, big trucks. Right, yeah. And then as far as going to the big 10 inch gear and everything, you're going to want to run a fab housing because the, di the diameter of the gear will actually hit the back of like a factory style housing. Yeah, so simply the, the, the gear set is it's just too, too big, large. Yeah. So you have to run a fab house. housing. So yeah. when he means fab housing, he means fabricated. Right, not an OEM so custom, style housing. Yeah, like yeah. a custom fabri fabricated right. by hand or, you know, small manufacturer. What are some good companies that people can go look at for, like, housing? Um, yeah, there's Camberg, Tube Works. All those guys make a really good uh, housings from, uh, that's what we're running, like, in Max's F100 is there. Uh, three and a half housing. inch Camberg housing with the yeah. two and a half inch hubs, yeah. Yeah, and there's like places like Rough Stuff and um, yeah, ID. Yeah, a lot of people make a good housing. Yeah, ID yeah. This particular one here is a chassis works. Chassis works. And uh, is going into a drag vehicle. So this one in particular is going to a drag car, but mm -hmm. when it comes to strength mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. and also on these best trucks, the off-road stuff, they'll run a truss. To brace these tubes to the center, also that's right, a big thing. right. So they don't bend when you. Yeah, because uh, jump it over a house. Yeah, they take a lot of abuse and they'll twist. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, right on. So, um, in retrospect, you take your your case, you bolt it in, um, you weld on either your uh, your flanges or your full float or semi float. The yeah. full float or semi semi float ends. Uh, you put a hub on or you don't, and then you bolt the tire on and. Fill this guy up with, with fluid. So here's this is a, a fill plug, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you drain it? Uh, this particular housing has a drain plug on it. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Uh, factory housings don't. So I recommend while it's apart, welding one in. Otherwise, you're stuck sucking the oil out of the fill fill hole on the actual third member. Yeah. yeah so yeah. <laughs> I've done that. Myself. Yeah. I think we're good, dude. Um, if you guys have any questions about um, any of this stuff, please um, leave us a comment. Uh, we'll make sure to ask Alec. Um, you guys can hit up Alec on in the DMs or whatever on Instagram. If, if you guys have questions about any of this kind of stuff, he'd be glad to help, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Up. Yeah, hit him up. He's not a dick. He's a really nice guy. <laughs> no matter where you're at, he'll accept you know USPS package or UPS package with your gear set in. Absolutely. It and, yeah, we can yeah. absolutely. We have all kinds of cases. We can build one from scratch, ship it to you, you can ship us a blown up one, we yeah. can rebuild it, all that kind of stuff. Thank you very much, brother. We appreciate you so much yeah, no uh, for inviting us again into your shop. If you guys liked what you just saw, if you enjoyed it, please make sure you like, um, comment, subscribe, um, so we can keep doing what we're doing and bring you guys awesome content. Um, thank you very much for watching. And with that, we say, Goodbye and happy uh, gearing. Go get you a junkyard nine inch and just have at it. Go crazy. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Uh, 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 uh,